Hello grade teens, in this video I'm going to be going over classification of matter, matter and materials, pure substances versus mixtures, past paper questions. Now even if you're not writing exams, this can help you prepare for the work that you're doing in class, it can help you understand it better, and it can help you prepare for tests or even class activities. So I hope you stay for the whole video, let's go. Often in these questions you are given substances or things like that and they're mentioned in a table. And then they say from the table, you have to choose something that fits what the question is asking. So that's basically what this question is doing. So 8.1, and obviously this is question eight. I've taken this from a past exam paper, so that's why it's jumping randomly to question eight, but it doesn't matter. So from the table, write down one element. Now remember, an element is a pure substance. Elements appear on the periodic table of elements. So you need to look at the table and you need to know that an element would be nickel. So nickel, N-I-C-K-E-L, you can write down. Nothing else from the table is an element. If you thought brass was an element, that's not correct. Brass is something else. Brass is actually a mixture. And I know that seems weird, but brass is what we call an alloy. Now, an alloy is, an, is a mixture of various types of metals. And actually, it is a homogeneous or homogeneous mixture because it's uniform in composition. We can't tell the difference when we look at it between what metal comes from where. It just looks solid. So that's brass. Nickel's the only element. From the table above, write down one homogeneous mixture or homogeneous mixture. And we just mentioned brass is one of them. It's an alloy, which is a homogeneous mixture. Are there any other homogeneous mixtures on the list? You need to take a look and think about it. Another homogeneous mixture is air. If you look around, that's air all around you. It's actually a mixture of gases, as I've mentioned in my videos. But you can't look at the air and be like, oh, there's nitrogen, there's oxygen. It just looks uniform. You can't distinguish with the naked eye the different components. That's why it's homo, homogeneous. Okay, nothing else. Oh, wait, salt solution. That's also salt solution. Um, you know. Assuming that the salt has properly dissolved in the solution, which normally salt does dissolve. So salt water, for example, um, it doesn't have to be NaCl, it can be any salt, but that is a homogeneous mixture because if you take table salt, for example, if you dissolve it in water, you can't tell the difference. It becomes a solution. Everything else in the table, nothing fits 8.1.2. Now they said write down one. I've mentioned all of them because maybe you didn't choose brass, maybe you chose salt solution. All of these are correct. So all of those will be on the memo. Then we've got a diatomic molecule. Okay, diatomic molecule. Remember diatomic, that's when one atom is bonded to itself. So for example, hydrogen gas is H and H. Oxygen gas is O and O. Which fits that category over here? It would be chlorine gas. And it's one of those that you need to memorize. It is Cl2. And I do have a little rhyme that can help you memorize the diatomic molecules or the diatomic elements. Have no fear of ice cold beer. We've got H2, hydrogen, N2, nitrogen, F2, fluorine, O2, oxygen, I2, iodine, Cl2, chlorine, and Br2, bromine. Those are all diatomic molecules. Okay, a heterogeneous mixture. Now, heterogeneous is one where we can see the different components in the mixture. It's not uniform. You can tell the different components apart using your naked eye. And in this case, the, the correct answer would be, let's see, we've got carbonated water. That would be the correct answer and the only answer actually. Now again, you might be confused. You might say, ma'am, carbonated water, how is that heterogeneous? Carbonated water is water with gas in it. So there's bubbles in it, there's gas in it. There's two separate phases, liquid, the water, and then the carbonation part of it, so the gas part of it. You can see the gas bubbles. That is actually a heterogeneous mixture. Everything else is homogeneous. We said salt solution, all solutions are homogeneous or homogeneous. Sand, uh, that's actually another heterogeneous mixture that I didn't see from the list, sand. And you might think, why? If you take a look closely at sand, 
it's actually a mixture of different types of minerals and rocks and substances. And if you look carefully, you can actually distinguish between it. That would be the best category that it would fit in. Then a substance with magnetic properties. That would be nickel again. They didn't say in the question that you can't use a substance more than once. So nickel is the correct answer. Nickel is one of the ferromagnetic elements. Remember, ferromagnetic elements are substances or these are elements that have magnetic properties. And the three that you've learned about should have been nickel, cobalt, and iron, F-E. Nickel, cobalt, and iron. Our next question says, explain why pots and pans are made of metal, but the handles are made of plastic or wood. Why? Now, you need to think about what does metal do that plastic does not do? And think about it in the context of pots and pans. So, your answer would say something like metals are good conductors of heat. Okay? So, they are conductors of heat, and plastic or wood are not good conductors of heat. So, pots and pans themselves need to be made of metal because you need to be able to conduct heat well throughout the pot. That's how the cooking happens. But the handles, you don't want that to be able to conduct heat well because you're going to burn yourself. So plastic or wood, those are thermal insulators. Okay, so heat insulators. So pots and pans are made of metal. Metal are thermal conductors, which is what we want because we want it to cook. But handles like made out of plastic or wood are thermal insulators which is what we want because we don't want to burn ourselves on the handle. That is what you would say. There we go. I've written out the answer. Then 8.3, name one method that you can use to separate a salt solution into its components. Now, a salt solution, solution implies that there's something that's being dissolved in something and something that we put into something. Okay, so basically a solution has a solute and a solvent. So the solute is salt, whether that's table salt or whatever, it's salt. And the solvent is water, most likely. So how do we, when we combine it, it's called a solution. How do we get those components separate again? So one way is to use evaporation. It's a physical method that we can use to separate mixtures, evaporation. And basically what will happen is the solvent or the water will evaporate. Remember, evaporation is when we go from liquid to gas. So it'll leave the container, leaving behind the salt. Right, this is a multiple choice question. Another exam question. Which of the following is a pure substance? Now remember, pure substances can be divided into the elements and the compounds. And remember, we also have molecules in there. So elements or compounds. Molecules are compounds. So elements or compounds, that's a pure substance. And then pure su you get pure substances and you get mixtures. So mixtures are not pure substances. So which of these are pure substances? The answer is oxygen gas. That is actually a molecule, which is actually a compound. The diatomic molecule, it's O2. Brass seems like it would be an element, but it's not. Remember I said earlier in the video, it's actually an alloy. It's actually a mixture. A cup of tea is a mixture. It's a homogenous mixture. Salt water is a homogenous mixture. These are both solutions. Right, another list question. I want you to pause the screen. Let me move myself out the way so you can see marker locations. I want you to pause the screen. You can do it and you can unpause and see how many of these you get correct. It's out of 10 marks. So it says the items below are mixtures, compounds, or elements. You may use the same items more than once. So using the list of items above, write down a homogenous mixture. Now, the first one that I see is air. Air is a homogenous mixture. Another one that's actually a homogenous mixture that you may not know is tap water. And you might say to me, whoa, 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 wait, ma'am, isn't water a compound? So how is it a mixture? Because remember, if you're an element or a compound, you're a pure substance, not a mixture. So water's H2O. But remember, tap water is slightly different to pure water, pure H2O. Tap water contains dissolved minerals in it. So tap water, it contains ions and all those sorts of things. So technically, it is a mixture. However, it's a homogenous mixture because if you look at the water, you can't see the different minerals floating or the ions or whatever floating in the water. 
So tap water is uniform in its composition throughout. Those are the only two homogeneous mixtures I can see on the list. A heterogeneous or heterogeneous mixture, that would be, let's look, take a look very carefully, oil and water. Oil and water, that forms an emulsion. If you drop oil in water, the oil will form a layer on top of the water. They won't mix. And if you shake it up, it'll be little oil bubbles. So heterogeneous mixture, it's not uniform in composition. You can see the differences between the oil and the water. Everything else is not a mixture. Everything else is either a compound or an element. Then we've got a metal. Now, metal could be copper. Copper is a metal. Remember, metals are on the left-hand side of the periodic table, excluding hydrogen. Hydrogen is on the left-hand side, but it's not a metal. And if you say, ma'am, what do you mean by left-hand side, right-hand side? I do have videos on it, but the periodic table can essentially be divided into a left-hand side and a right-hand side by a little step that separates the two sides. Okay, so that is copper, or you could say iron filings, because iron is also a metal. Right. Let's see. A noble gas. Now, noble gases are the last group on the periodic table. So if you're looking at a periodic table, you know that they are in groups like this. This is group one, that's group two, that's group three. Noble gases are the last group. So everything in the last group. Okay, basically the last column. So a noble gas, if you take a look at the options very carefully, is neon. Now, the next question says the name of a compound with Fe2 ions in it. And this is a little bit more of a difficult question. We've got two compounds that have iron in it, Fe. We've got this one and we've got this one. However, only one of them have Fe2 ions in it. And if you think about it very carefully, you might think that this is the answer because there's a little two over there. You might think that because there's a little two over there, it means that there's Fe2 ions, but that's not true. Just to show you quickly, if I have to give you this compound over here, that's magnesium oxide. Actually, I can tell you that magnesium has Mg2 ions in it. What this means, if you haven't done naming yet, or if you've forgotten, or if you want to recap, is that the magnesium, the ions that make up this compound, have a charge of plus two. And that is true. The oxygen has a charge of minus two. Now, how come there's no little numbers here? Because if you have a charge of plus two, and then oxygen is a charge of minus two, what's plus two minus two? Zero. Overall, the compound has a charge of zero. Neither of these need to be multiplied by anything. So this is the name of my compound. You can also think of it like this. Magnesium has to give away two electrons. Oxygen needs two electrons. That's what these things mean. So magnesium can give away two electrons. Oxygen needs two electrons. So if you're giving away two and you need two, then overall, it's MgO. What I do here, I do in my naming video. So if you have no, no clue what I'm talking about, go check out my naming videos, naming compounds videos. I do have a few on my channel. But back to the question, which has Fe2 ions in it? Now, if you take a look at this compound, which I think most of you would have thought it was this answer, the charge of oxygen. And again, watch my naming videos if you don't know where I'm getting this information from. Oxygen has a charge of negative two, but in this compound, there's three of them, okay? Which means overall, this part of the molecule has a charge of negative six. Iron, there were two of them, so I must multiply this by two. What must this charge be over here in order to make the overall compound's charge be zero? Okay, so this part of the molecule there's three of them. That's why I multiplied it by three. If there's three of them, you multiply by three. If there's two of them, you multiply by two. That's why these things are in brackets. There's three oxygen, so I'm multiplying by three. And the charge of oxygen is negative two. So overall, negative six. Over here, I'm multiplying by two. 
So what charge must this be in order to make the overall compound neutral or zero, which it is. The overall compound is neutral. This must be three. What that means is that the ions, the iron ions, the iron ions <laughs> have a charge of plus three. So technically in this compound, it's Fe123. Okay. This is very, very complicated, very, very difficult. So if you're not understanding this, it's okay. I do have naming play, um, videos on naming where I go over it in more detail and slower. And I'll be doing more this term, so don't stress if you haven't gotten to it yet in class. But basically, that is how that works. So that's not the correct answer. Let's take a look at the other compound. If you take a look at this compound over here, FES, if you look at the periodic table, S has a charge of minus two. It's in the same group as oxygen, so it has a charge of minus two. Overall, this is a neutral compound, so this must equal zero. What must the charge of Fe be in order to make this equal zero? Well, this must be plus two. That means that Fe has a charge of two, so it's Fe two. So that is actually the correct answer for 2.5. Again, if this is confusing to you, don't stress. I have videos on it and I will be doing more. Right, 2.6, a pure substance. Remember, a pure substance is either an element or a compound or a molecule. So a pure substance, you could have told me iron is a pure substance, the iron filings. You could have told me copper because copper is an element. You could have told me FES because that's a compound. You could have told me, what else could you have told me? You could have told me sodium chloride powder, sodium chloride powder, because sodium chloride is a compound, it's NaCl. You could have told me Fe2O3, because that's a compound. You could have told me fluorine gas, because that's a molecule, fluorine gas, which is also a compound. You could have told me graphite, which is also technically a form of carbon, graphite. You could have told me neon, which is a noble gas. Any of those are pure substances. So basically everything that is not a mixture. So the mixtures would have been air, it would have been glass, it would have been tap water, it would have been oil and water. So everything else counts as a pure substance. It's either a compound or an element. Then, a substance that is a good thermal insulator. What is a good thermal insulator? Air is a good thermal insulator, which is why a lot of animals trap air in their feathers or in their coats to keep warm. Okay, It's why your hairs stand on end on your body when you get cold, because your hairs are trying to trap air. Because hair, <laughs> the hair on your arm is trying to trap air, because air is a good thermal insulator. It keeps you warmer. Okay. A substance that is a good conductor of electricity, that would be copper. Any metal, but copper in particular, is a good um, conductor of electricity. That's why we use it in conducting wires. A compound which is a solid at 25 degrees Celsius. You could have told me FES or FE2. O3. These are all solid at 25 degrees Celsius, and they're compounds. These are compounds. So you can't say copper, because copper is a metal and it is solid, but it's not a compound. It has to be one of the compounds. You could also say sodium chloride powder, because sodium chloride, again, is a compound. Then, a diatomic gas. Which of these is a diatomic gas? Fluorine gas is a diatomic gas. It's F2, but you would write out fluorine gas because that's how they gave it to you in the question. Remember earlier in the video, I mentioned all the diatomic elements and one brittle material. You should have learned that glass is brittle. So it's hard, but it's brittle. If you'd like to see more videos like that, like this one, please comment down below and let me know what videos you'd like to see next. Subscribe for more physics, math, and chemistry. Bye, everybody.